Yes, what is up everybody? Happy Monday. Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 203. We're up there. We're um stuck there. <laughs> we, we are stuck there. We were just talking about how we got to episode 200. It's like, oh my god, this huge milestone. And it feels like we've been stuck in the low 200s now for months. Uh, it's been literally three, three weeks. weeks. Uh, so welcome everyone to Ginger Runner Live. We are we are honored that you would spend your Monday evening with us here live, or maybe you're listening to the podcast or, or hanging out and watching uh, the show later. We thank you for that. Um, tonight, fun episode. We're gonna we're going to uh, introduce our guest here tonight, Sana Guadarma, Guadarama, uh, a SoCal badass ultra runner who just came back from Costa Rica. She was there for a number of weeks and she competed and placed third in the Coastal Challenge, which is a multi-day stage race that runs through the jungle on the beach. It sounds incredible. It looks incredible. And it looks brutal. Uh, and Sana's going to talk to us all about how she managed to crush the six-day stage race and uh, what goes into training for that, preparation for something like that. Uh, it's definitely something I've been interested in, doing a, a stage race. And uh, I'm going to talk to her and all of that tonight about uh, her prep and her training for that. Um, we're also going to talk about Barkley. I promise you. We're going to start the show talking a little bit about what just happened this Everybody's weekend. Everybody's talking about it in the chat room right now. Yeah. Don't think that we're not going to talk about it, because we are. Uh, so sit back, relax, everyone. Uh, it's very awesome. I realize I want to bring up that lower third. Great. We've done that. Um, <laughs> we're, we're excited for tonight's show. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Yay! What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 203. Uh, I'm very excited about tonight's show. I think everybody in the chat room right now is talking. I asked everybody how their Barkley hangovers were doing, and a lot of yeah. people still have the sads. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah we, <laughs> we definitely still have the sads and the tireds. Uh, I can't even imagine what those who participated in the event have as far as that's concerned. I can tell you concerned. how Ingen in the chat room feels. Ingen says, I feel like I did after the Seahawks lost the Super Bowl. Oh. Wow. Bringing that one up. Oof. Hits me right in the heart. Uh, <laughs> in case you are unfamiliar, uh, this last weekend was a big weekend in ultra sports. The Barkley Marathons took place over the course of the weekend. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what that is, look it up. Uh, there's also a great movie available out there called Barkley, The Race That Eats Its Young, well worth a watch. And there's a, a video movie that I made following Gary Robbins' last two attempts at the Barkley called Where Dreams Go to Die. And you can get that at wheredreamsgotodie.com. Um, that's the one time I'll promote that on tonight's show. Uh, so go get it if you haven't got it. But this weekend was the 2018 version, and the weather played a significant role in making sure that no one finished the event. Uh, there was one fun run finisher, Gary Robbins, mm -hmm. but no shortage of incredible athletes towed that line. Um, I, I can't imagine towing that line. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Pop361 in the chat room says, I'm sad the weather didn't support the runners, but it was a Barkley for the ages. Mad respect for those who got all the pages on loop two no matter what. And that's one of the things yeah. that I thought was really cool this year, that there was a number of people out on loop two just gutting it out, collecting their pages and having a great time. And by the sounds of it, the little tidbits that we've got just like bonding and enjoying the experience. Which in our experience of just uh, documenting the event and being at the event for the last couple of years, that's part of what makes it so special for the people who participate is that they get to meet each other and hang out and stuff like that. Uh, our guest tonight on tonight's show, Sana Guadarama, is, is fresh off of a, a big trip to Costa Rica where she participated in what's called the Coastal Challenge. It's a six-day stage race of ultra distances, all sorts of distances, runs through the jungle, up mountains, over passes, in through towns, along the beach, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I've heard of this thing. It looks incredible. And uh, Sana just crushed it, placing third overall uh, for the women on this six-day stage race. So we're going to talk to her in just a second uh, about that. And she also trains in Southern California, which is where one of the um, top uh, top losers of the Barkley placed, uh, <laughs> Guillaume Calmet, who's also been a guest on this show multiple times. Uh, I can't say top finishers because technically no one finished. Um, but uh, Guillaume uh, trains in the same mountains, and Sana and Guillaume know each other quite well as well. Before we introduce Sana, of course, 
we have some individuals that we would like to thank for making this show even possible. Uh, Patreon, first and foremost, anyone who supports us on Patreon, thank you. Uh, we have three top tier Patreon supporters who month after month allow us to do this. And uh, we love to give them shout outs each month. Chris Lee from Hong Kong. Chris Lee is uh, the founder of Trailblazers, which is a community over there that showcases all of the incredible trails that Hong Kong has to offer. They just did a screening this last weekend right. um, of Where Dreams Go to Die. It was amazing. I only saw the photos, but uh, it was great. It was for charity. And we really appreciate Chris Lee and all that he's doing for the trail running community there in Hong Kong. Brian Sands, longtime viewer of the show, good friend. Uh, ran his first marathon last year, October 8th, is training currently for his first ultra marathon. He's inspired by you, the fellow viewers, and the community. Uh, he's a wonderful human being on an amazing journey, and he's been a huge supporter of the show, making sure that it happens week in and week out. Big shout-out to Brian. And finally, Rick Bjarnison uh, from British Columbia, Canada. Brick, Rick and his team at CheekyMonkeyMedia.ca are currently redesigning the Ginger Runner dot com website and uh, he and his team are very talented i've already got a chance to look at the new version i'm so excited uh, i have no idea when it's gonna be finished because it's a big big project it's something it needed a lot of it work. needed a lot of work and that's <laughs> why i never did it because i'm like oh it's gonna be months and months and months of work but these guys work fast so i'm hoping it'll be up sooner than later and rick and his team are super talented so thanks rick shout out to you guys and rick is also an ultra runner that's uh that's why he loves supporting the show and stuff like that so it's pretty cool um, all right, so our guest tonight, all the way from Southern California and fresh off of what sounds like a big weekend of climbing and uh, getting sick. So unfortunately, her voice is a little shot, but we're going to try to take it easy on her. Uh, without any further ado, let's welcome our guest tonight, Isana Guadarrama. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm surviving. <laughs> I think that's that, that's good. Yeah. Caught so the you, plague, but you, I'm doing better. So you you just came back from like a, a, a climbing festival, a climbing expo? Yeah, it was a Flash Foxy. It was like an all women's climbing festival in Bishop. Okay. Beautiful. Of course, I snuck a few runs with Juniper and uh, absolutely gorgeous. I just woke up yesterday and I had a fever and a cough and I'm just like, why? Yeah. So I was going to stay till Wednesday. So now I'm just home. Well, uh, I know you from ultra running. I know uh, we've run a couple of the same races. You kicked my ass at our both our first fifty miler, Lake, uh, like not Lake Sonoma, right, barely. No. Leona Divide. Uh, <laughs> it we was were a few minutes, not but it was one of those like we both rolled into the last aid station, just like fever drenched from the heat yeah. and just crushed. And I remember like looking for Coke, and they didn't have Coke. And by the time I turned around, you were already ten minutes down the trail, just crushing oh. it. Did you get your Western yeah. States qualifier at that one? I forget. No, I missed it by three minutes. Three minutes. Because I missed yeah. it by like 13 minutes mm -hmm. or something. Um, that, was, that was a brutal day. It was a brutal day. But since then, you've gone on to complete some huge races and, and really just flushed out your, your resume. Uh, how has your ultra journey been? And like what's really been drawing you into the sport more and more as of late? Um, more of where the race is and what it consists of. Um, I've stopped technically racing in Southern California because I feel that I could run here anytime I want. And that is why you see me in the Pacific Northwest all the time, because some of the best races cover some of the most beautiful terrain up there, like Fat Dog and Gorge Waterfalls and Orcas and all that stuff. It's just beautiful. Yeah, so, so you're drawn to the environment, yeah. essentially, whatever the oh, environment yeah. the race is in. It's my my way of travel, of vacation, is to race in different places. It's not a bad reason to race, to mm -hmm. be able to, to travel. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, of course, I want to remind you that we are live with our guests, Sana Gu uh, Guadarrama and Kim. Yeah, I'm in the chat room as always. So if you guys do have questions for our guests, please mm -hmm. put them in the chat room. We'll be pulling questions throughout the hour. Yeah, what's going on in the chat room right now? Are people still mm. pe st people still talking about Barkley? A lot of Barkley talk. And I do want to give a special shout out to Lori and Chuck, <coughs> who raced this weekend as well. Longtime supporters of the show. Congratulations, mm -hmm. you guys, and your son as well. I yeah. believe raced his first ultra. So congrats to him. Nice. Congrats. Um, so, Sana, just speaking of Barkley, since you you do have a bit of a connection knowing uh, Guillaume Calmet well, and stuff like that. Yeah, we 
run I've ever since I started running I've I've known who he was and have run with like Katie and Dom and I know basically him through them and like the coyotes and he is just you know he would run a race a hundred miles like hurt and the next week on Thursday he'll be at coyote practice running again <laughs> and he just never never stops he's just you know all muscle and just all grit he's yeah, we like our experience with him has always been uh, <clears throat> he never stops smiling. Like it doesn't matter oh, yeah. how much pain he's in. Right. He's enjoying he's it. Good time. Yeah. Yeah. I still so, remember the very first time that I met Guillaume. You and I were running in the Santa Monica mo Mountains separately, but we started together. Right. And I was running and this guy who to me, this was early on. He appeared to be like an elite runner was running. We passed each other and he said he said something like, you're doing great or something you are doing we, so we well like exchange like hellos and i remember running into you after i think at the end of our run saying i saw this like elite like french guy do you know who he is and that was my first that was my first exposure to guillaume and uh, every time we've seen him at races he's always the one that is just smiling and having the best time but also like killing it <laughs> yeah i think uh, uh there was a angela's crest 100 training run that that we ran um, yeah. sauna, and I remember being up there with Guillaume. Like we were camping with Guillaume, and he was, he was doing his own run that weekend. Like we were part of the sanctioned, sanctioned training run. Yeah. And Guillaume had just decided to run the whole course instead. So he would like the whole weekend, the three days. I remember he, that. Yeah. Oh, God. He just did thirty miles a day. Well, the last day was like forty, but yeah. he was just like, "You guys go do what you are going to do. I'm going to run the whole course." That's. That's a testament to who this guy is. He also, it's so funny, he'll have conversations with Jun my dog Juniper mm -hmm. and his French accent and talk to Juniper. It's like, oh, Juniper, how are you? And like, <laughs> I'm terrible, but it's so funny. Ugh. That's that's awesome. So yeah. shout out to, of course, to Guillaume and to anyone who uh, towed the line this weekend. It's something I will never do. Sana, would you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, your training and, and the Coastal Challenge. So this is what I'm really excited to talk to you about. So this set the stage here. How did you hear about this event and what drew you in? I know that we just talked about traveling and stuff, but this is a big endeavor. Yeah, um, I had gone to Costa Rica last year for Run Like a Girl. I was uh, guiding for one of the retreats. And my friend Haley was volunteering at the Coastal Challenge and they participate a lot with the race. And she's like, you need to run this race. She had done it a few years before and that's where she met her husband. And she's just like a really like they play a huge part of the race. And so I thought about it and I was like, oh, well, it sounds great. And then I kept thinking about it and kept looking at all the photos and the videos and I was like, well, you know, I wanted originally to run Sean O'Brien again, mm -hmm. um, but just this outweighed outweighed it. It just sounded like such an epic experience that I couldn't pass it up. So it's six days? Six days, um, 147 miles and 30 plus thousand feet in elevation gain. And the funny thing is I didn't even look at the... I looked at the course profile the week before the race, and oh, nice. I think the coastal challenge. Yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of vert, a little bit of climbing, and I looked at the course, and there was one day where it had nine thousand in gain in twenty two miles, and I was like, "What? Uh oh, <laughs> what did I get myself into?" So how did you yeah. train for it then? Like, if you're <clears throat> that late into it, when you actually realize it's gonna take some climbing? Yeah, it um. I think my base training was pretty solid at that point. Sure. Um, I had done, leading up to the race, I had done, say, like, um, I did a Ray Lakes loop in the Sierra. Um, it was 52 miles in a day. Mm -hmm. And then a few days later, I did Rim to Rim to Rim, which is another 50-something miles. Um, so I think those back-to-back -back runs have really helped. And then... In uh, December, I did the Zion Traverse, and then three days later, I ran Ray Miller 50 miler. I mean, I don't necessarily like want to tell people to do back to back 50 milers within sure. a few days, but knowing that I could recover and then run this race, and then Ray Miller, I still was like fourth female. Um, 
it gave me the confidence to go into this race and be think, okay, I can, I can do back to back runs. Um, and then in January with my training leading, like the big amount of training that I had left, I got the flu. And then when I got over the flu, I had bronchitis for two weeks oh, no. and then I got better and I went straight to Costa Rica. So if anything, the rest really helped. Um, Force taper, but, essentially. Yeah, force taper for a month. It was not ideal, but it was, yeah, I guess it, maybe it helped. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems like it absolutely did. So in this case, this was your <clears throat> first stage race. Yeah, I've never, never done it before. And going into it, I had no idea um, what to do. Like mm -hmm. the first day, everybody says, you know, take it easy, take it easy. But it's like, how, how easy can you take it? Or how hard should you push? Like, I didn't know, like, where, where to start. I mean, I think this is going to be good conversation to have, because there's going to be people that are watching this show, myself included, but there are people that are going to be watching this show who maybe have run an ultra before, but have never done a stage race. But there's going to come a time when an opportunity presents itself. Uh, like trans, trans, uh, trans, Rockies, trans, Alpine. trans, Alpine, right. trans Rockies, perfect examples of multi-day stage races that are accessible to a lot of people because the distances each day aren't intimidating. I think the yeah. longest, what's the longest distance you had? Did you have a 50 K a little bit over? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the distances aren't super intimidating. It's the back to back. So yeah. in your case, yeah. How did you handle that first day? People that are experienced are telling you slow down stuff like that. It, it, did you listen or did you just do um, your own thing? I, for the most part, I listened. It was interesting because um, the first day, the first like eight or nine miles are completely flat. So people are just zooming by. Mm. Um, but the huge thing about the Coastal Challenge isn't the, the, the miles. It's the heat and the humidity. And so a lot of people are traveling from places that don't have that. And so, you know, I... I don't know. I like the heat. I like running in the heat. And I spent the whole month. I was sick, but I was doing hot yoga and spending mm -hmm. time in the sauna. Um, <clears throat> so I took it easy, but I was able to kind of still do well when mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So the first day I, I didn't try as much as I would want to. Got it. So Another thing that I'm even thinking as I'm talking, I'm like, why, how do you pack? Like, because I know some some stage races require you to keep everything within a certain, you're not allowed anything more than like a bag, right? A bag of nutrition, gear, everything that you need for every day. So for yeah. this one, did you have to pack very specifically? Did you have a case or were you able to pack seven suitcases and just show up in Costa Rica? I... They said you could have like a dry bag or like a box, um, but because they're transporting all your stuff every day, it couldn't be too much. Um, so it was really hard to pack because I had no idea what to do. <laughs> was I didn't it know weight limit? Pack. Like you're only allowed like 50 pounds or something? No. Yeah. Okay. So you could pack as much as you could fit into the dry bag. Yeah. People had blow up mattresses. Wow. So yeah, it was luxury. What about you? Did you ha did you have the opportunity to bring any luxury items, or did you try to go minimal? Um, I brought my roll recovery, like the skate thing that I could roll my legs out during the day. Um, I think that was I brought like protein powder and like recovery drinks. That was really nice. Um, <clears throat> I brought a whole like two boxes full of trail butter, and lived off of it. So nice. that that was also really nice. That was my luxury. Did you have to bring all the food for camp and for everything, or did they feed you? They, they feed you, um, but being a vegan athlete, it's like a lot of the athletes that were there too, like Mike Wardian, there's some a lot of guys from like Europe, a lot of them were vegan. So yeah. it was, we all kind of like joked around because what we would say, what's for breakfast? Beans and rice. What's for lunch? Beans and rice. What's for dinner? Beans and rice. They had a few like, options for vegans but it was it was really hard so mm -hmm. we all just kind of um had our own stuff were, were you were you able ever able to go into a town and and get anything yeah. okay so you have a yeah, little bit of time <clears throat> there's a few towns um dominical is the second day i think it's the second day yeah um 
and I've been to Dominical so many times with uh, Run Like a Girl retreats that I know, like, this is the coffee shop I go to. This is this is the place where I get the best vegan Thai food or whatnot. So it was really nice. That's awesome. So you had a little bit of familiarity with the region. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we are live. If you have questions for Sana or any questions about stage racing or any of the gear that she brought, any of that kind of stuff, bring them on. Uh, this is a great opportunity to interact with her live in case you have questions about maybe doing your own stage race someday. Uh, what do we got, Kim? A uh, question from Nathaniel in the chat room. What is your best memory in or out of the race from Costa Rica? Uh, the people that I've met. I um, <clears throat> spent a lot of time by myself running a lot of time <laughs> and questioning my sanity for the most part and there was one day that I ran with the second female runner and it wasn't like we had we just had a really good day where you know we weren't we were pushing each other but we weren't running like I didn't feel like we we're running fast mm -hmm. um, but the conversation was just so awesome that it was just it didn't feel like we we're racing anymore like we're just having a good training run as friends. And that was my favorite part. Like the people you meet, like I was sitting next to the elite people at a table. And I, I thought like, this would never happen at any other race. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't have lunch and breakfast and, you know, talk about life every day for six days straight with, with these people, unless, you know, you're stuck with them. <laughs> but as, you know, one thing that I just love about the sport, too, is it's every ultra that we've ever been to, you're able to walk right up to the man or woman who's yeah. going to win that race and say, listen, I, I'm a big fan or uh, I'm excited to see you win. I think that's really neat and unique about this. Can't do that in football games. Yes. No. No. Oh, I. Oh. Kim, I'm talking specifically <laughs> about that time you tried to get onto the field. Um, all right. So now I'm curious about the individual days. Did you like was one day in your mind going to be the day that was going to determine whether you could continue or if it was going to be the toughest day? Did that change while you were there? Like was weather um, a factor in it, that sort of thing? Every day was so different on the third day. Um, I just, I didn't think I was going to continue. It was um, you, you had to, navigate through a river for a while okay. and like rock hop, jump off rocks and just hop around. And at some point you're swimming because the water is so high and it just felt like ages, like hours would go by and then I'd be distracted by how pretty it was. Um, and for me, it was the most difficult part because I'd spent the last two years with either a sprained ankle or a rolled ankle or something wrong with my ankles that when I rock hop, I'm just so deathly afraid that I might do something again, mm -hmm. that I'm just like crawling. And when I finished that, that stage, I said, if any of these stages are similar to this, I, I can't like, I, it's just not fun for me. I'm just shaking from being nervous. Um, and that was day three. Mm. I mean, I, I, is that a good thing or a bad thing? So, like, by day three, are you getting over that hump of nerves? Like, was that the time that you were able to click over to the, oh, I, I've actually got this? Or was it no, the next four days day was three, worse? Like, I, I don't know if I could do this. It yeah. wasn't just, like, the river, but you're going through these trails, trails, <laughs> that I thought for the whole time, I was like, I'm going the wrong way because this is not a trail. I'm bushwhacking. I'm tripping over things. And then I see a ribbon, and I think – really wow. and then you're going up this like steep section um and then going down this cliff where i would start falling and my feet would dingle if i like caught <laughs> something and i'm just like i think of my friends like my friend vince would really really love this and then i would get really mad because i know he would <laughs> love this and i would hate it um and then day four came and that's when it was, there was like 9,000 in gain. And that's the day that I spent with the other girl. And it was the best day ever to go from the worst day ever where I didn't think I could continue to right. having that feeling where, oh, I think I can do this. It was just, it was amazing. That's, that's impressive. I mean, just 
knowing the mental side of ultras we've talked about on the on the show 202 times uh <laughs> it it's different for everyone everyone has whatever their wall is at some point during a race or in this case a stage race we we all have that <laughs> thing that we need to push through was there ever a point that you were able was it on day four when you were running with a woman that you were able to just like relinquish control and just be able to enjoy the rest of the experience or was it by day six that you're like this is the last day i can finally breathe a little i think it was the beginning of day four where i, I was just you know you just got to go for it and when i was running with her and we just kept running together um i realized that maybe i maybe i can do this and if i can't then i can't but i'm gonna see what's gonna happen and i'm not gonna I can be upset about it or I can, you know, be happy and enjoy the process. And how did so. it compare to some of your other ultra experiences? You've done things like fat dog, you've done, you know, all sorts of SoCal distances and, and, and everything like that. How did it compare? Um, it's very similar. I, in anything that I do at the beginning of a, of a race or training or like rim to rim to rim, or, you know, even Ray Lakes loop, I, I'm never super confident in my decision on what I'm doing. Um, and I think I go through a process where my body doesn't agree with me. Mm. And I hit that, that wall where it's like, I can either stop because my body doesn't like it. Or if I keep going, I break that wall down and that's when I start having fun. So it's just getting to that point. And it was kind of like I did that every day during the Coastal Challenge. And I do that even during Fat Dog and all the other races. Interesting. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we are, in fact, live. If you would like to ask any questions of Sana, just jump into the chat room. Uh, we have comments right over there. And Kim has been pulling them aside mm -hmm. throughout the show. What do we got, Kim? I was just going to say uh, a friend of mine, Graham, actually ran this race a number of years back. That's right. I remember that. And I just just hearing you say like you're kind of bushwhacking and you didn't think you were on course. I remember him yeah. echoing those exact th same sentiments. So. He, he had major medical issues, didn't he? I can't remember. I think he had to get his... pulled out or something like it was it heat. Was, like, I, th I think it was like the humidity, humidity. Issue coming from somewhere like Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I remember somewhere that. Like that in racing. And every year I'll, I'll hear about that. Like people who maybe aren't acclimated like, to the kidney humidity. Issues and yeah. All Hydration issues kind of turn into kidney issues because of the multi day thing it's it's like you're pushing yourself yeah. pretty hard every day yeah um but yeah sorry yeah a question from miranda in the chat room uh the coastal challenge is definitely on my bucket list what is your number one tip for doing this race or any stage race i i want to just say maybe let's what are your top three tips or a couple tips yeah because i feel like you might have a bunch that you were able to like pull from this experience so what, what are a couple things that you would definitely say would you would recommend for people I would say going into the race or like training for the race, um, do a lot of hot yoga really helps. Um, I did not have any issue with the heat. Like I could feel the, like the sun, like turning my skin color, like darker. I could feel the heat. Um, yeah, I know that but, feeling. I know. That. Yeah. You it's like almost <laughs> no, it doesn't. I turned red. different color. Yeah. I just changed <laughs> colors. <laughs> It was, it was like almost crisping my skin. It was so hot. Wow. Um, I had zero issues. It, I would also say um, know your nutrition because in the heat, your, your stomach does different things um, than, say, in the cold. And uh, bring something to help you with recovery. So, like, say, after the race, a recovery shake, or maybe you want that mattress in your tent because you will be eaten alive by bugs and it really would help you know <laughs> uh, i think that was probably the worst part of the race was the bugs not the so, first time I've heard, i feel yeah. like that's a that's a consensus yeah how and big I, of an issue was that during and after like at night it wasn't it, it's not an issue during the i've never wanted to run so much than when I was at that race, because when I was running, I wasn't getting eaten. But when I was relaxing, that's that was the worst. Oh, I have nightmares. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious about this side of things as well of just you're running for anywhere up to a 50K a day. So it, it's yeah. not going to take you all day. You're not out there for 12 to 16 hours, correct? There might be some people yeah. that are, but uh, yeah. in your case, no. So what do you do with the time that that you aren't running? Do 
do you get to just kick back and relax? Do you have to yeah. like gorge on as much food as possible? What's what's your in between uh, time like? My I would get back anywhere from I think the earliest was like ten thirty or eleven, and the latest was like one thirty maybe. <clears throat> I would immediately have a I brought a, a thing of protein and like super fruit, food greens, and I would make a protein shake. I would eat. I would shower. Did you bring a uh, blender? No, I just would like stir it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking like not like a fancy. Yeah, I was like, I'm thinking yeah. she's throwing in spinach and mango yeah. and like doing all this cool tropical stuff and just like her little neutral bullet. <laughs> just on the beach somewhere. In my not dreams. The case. Yeah, right. <laughs> um yeah, I would I would have that immediately afterwards and uh then I would eat and shower. You were just so um sweaty all the time that you would shower get out of the shower and then just be drenched again so it was just trying to keep your body cool mm. um and relaxed so just relaxing sometimes we we're on a beach so i would go Sounds swimming in the beach awesome. well and this entire seven hours of relaxing you're getting eaten alive by bugs okay. so. <laughs> remember that part so Sounds another, tip, awesome. another tip would be bring a hammock because there is a lot of trees to hang from, and you're less likely to be eaten alive or bitten by ants. Is the, do they give you warnings before the race, basically saying there are certain species of insects or animals? Like, do you have yeah. a safety meeting? Yeah, they they talk about like insects and and you know bugs and stuff. But you know, I've never had issues. Like I I was in Costa Rica last year. I travel in Thailand for two months. I've been in Mexico for you know so much time, and I've never been bitten. And I think this that week I was bitten for an, an, the entire traveling of my life. So you made up for lost time. Yeah, or the bugs did. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I got a text from Guillaume during the show. He has not slept yet, by the way. Uh, since we all know Guillaume here, I thought this would be fun to share. But the official 60-hour Barkley finish time just occurred. It is now 6.37 p.m. And four at six, minutes ago. Four minutes ago yeah. was the was the was uh, what would be the finished 60-hour cutoff time for the entire event. But uh, unfortunately, only one person was able to complete the fun run. That was Gary. And Guillaume was out there for an additional eight hours uh, cool. After getting all of his books on the third lap, he was out there during the last two miles for eight hours. Yeah. Uh, but he has not slept yet. Uh, so that's he just texted. He's like, I haven't slept. We're still hanging out. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have him on the show here. Um, it sounds like soon. so much fun. It sounds like fun. And also, uh, having seen and witnessed this, it is not. No. <laughs> it, it is not. Yeah. Um, it is a certain type, not even type two, it's like type nine fun. But even right yeah. now, like all the crew and all the people there have that weird, like brain fog. Kind of, like, I remember kind of feeling a little sick. <laughs> like it was that weird. Last day. Yeah, it messes with your body and your mind. Uh, more questions for Sana. Yeah, there's several, several questions about water. So what did you do? Did you carry a ton of water with you every day? Was yeah, water what are course? the logistics about that? There's aid stations. <clears throat> you okay. just never know. Uh, you kind of, oh, Juniper's here. Um, this is Juniper, the trail dog, famous. Yeah. She, she's drinking water. I don't know where. Uh, okay, right we'll, we'll get her in a second. Yeah. Um, the aid stations were just kind of, I don't know, like they could be four miles away, but it would take you so long because of the train. Mm. Um. So I'd always use water. I put water in my pack and I had my Solomon flasks in the front and I would always keep um, like a hydration, the hydration tablets. I just started using them. Uh, the, the goo hydration tablets, mm -hmm. they're amazing. Like them. I never liked the taste of anything other than water until I found these tablets are the only things that work with my stomach. Like I've tried noon and I just can't handle it. But there's something about the goo ones that I can I can use, and those worked perfectly. So my my pack would be filled with water, and I would only fill it about halfway okay. because I always used my flask, and it worked. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, nutrition wise, you just kind of stuck with the what what you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it a trail butter situation, and you take liquid in addition to that, or was it the other? Yeah. I had um, 
I didn't eat the breakfast that they served. I would always have, this was, I did this every day and I will, if I do this race again, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I had half a pouch of the, the big pouch of trail butter. Um, and that's it for breakfast. I mean, that's like already 400 calories. Um, and then I had some of the goo roctane gels during the run. Um, and then ate some of the potatoes and pineapple at the aid station and my stomach, I, for somebody that always has stomach issues, I did not have a single issue until maybe the 50 K I had, I had like a bladder infection, but I that'll slow. That yeah. That's sense. not a great thing to have in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> it was so painful. But... Do they have medical staff on site <laughs> that can help with all yeah. sorts of things like this? Everything. Yeah. They're fully, fully staffed with everybody. That's great. Uh, I, I'm. Was there a, like a super low moment? Was there a, a, a moment that you questioned? Uh, you mentioned day three earlier, but was there like yeah. a moment where you didn't think that you would be able to complete the entire week and you, you had to hop on a plane and go home? Um, <clears throat> there was on day three. Uh, it was just the worst of the lows, just the questioning of my choices and my training and my, my habits and what my idea of fun was. Um, because after the river navigating and you're going through these vines, you're going on this steep ridge. And, you know, I think to myself, like, this is kind of flat, you know, you should be running sauna, you should be running. And then I would start running and one of the vines on the, the ground just yanks my feet up and I would just keep falling. So I would like start running and just collapse, start running and collapse. And I told myself like, I have no idea what is in store. So if I have to walk, I'll walk. So I stopped and I took some photos and I was like, you have to enjoy this moment. Um, but I was just so unhappy. I. That day was the worst. Wow. Um, that was that was the lowest. And then on day five, when I had the bladder infection, I <clears throat> could not stop like feeling the sensation of needing to pee. Um, and I remember hearing a few years ago when Anna Frost would say like, "Oh, I just peed my pants because I was always I was always wet anyways." And I I understood why now. Because <laughs> you're just constantly wet. Right. Probably not just sweat, but like creek crossings, river crossings, yeah. jungle, you're probably just, everything, right? Your feet are always wet. You're always in some kind of river. Hmm. And I I would ask in the morning, I would ask some of the staff members, how many rivers do we have to cross today? Oh, That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm curious after day three then. So day three is a, is a super low. It sounds... I mean, it sounds like that low that you get in an ultra where you just question, you question a lot it was, of life. It was seven hours of, yeah, it was torture. Non non pleasant experience. When you get back to camp, <laughs> yeah. is it is it the other uh, participants in camp that help get you motivated to even think about the next day, or yeah. is it the next morning as your body has reset? Um, it was it was that that afternoon. Um, I was. You, they have masseuse, uh, masseuses there. Um, masseuse. So, uh, mas yeah. <laughs> that you, does not. That doesn't sound right. right. Masseuses. Maybe it's just masseuses. Masseuses. masseuses? masseuses? <laughs> uh, I right. don't mean to go off on a tangent, but this is hilarious. What is the plural of a masseuse? Is it just masseuse? Masseuses. Massagers. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, People to give sports massages to. Great. Um, or from. So you could get a package and get one every day. So I, at the first day, I was like, oh, I don't need this. I could just foam roll. And then I saw everybody else getting a massage. And I was like, ha, ah, that looks so amazing. <laughs> so on day three, I was getting a, a sports massage. And I was crying because it was just so nice to like, not, not like weird to be touched, but just like to have somebody like say like it's okay it's okay mm -hmm. and I'm I was just like overwhelmed and I'm laying on this table and there's the monkey howlers and a family of monkeys above us just like running around and howling and I'm just like I completely forget of my day's activity and how like torturous it was and I was just really enjoying myself and just like that moment I'm like okay it's gonna be okay um, but it's just talking with everybody after, you know, you're sitting around, 
people that finished it in like four or five hours to people that finished it in 10 hours. And it just really grounds you and kind of, it put me in my place and just like, you're not the only one suffering and they're keep, they're going to continue. You have no reason to not continue. Michael, Michael Wardian rolled his ankle and kept running every single day. Yeah. Like I have no excuse. So that was, you know, helpful. Well, I want to point out to those who maybe are watching live or watching the archive version of this, or even just listening to it, that Sana placed third female, uh, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Sana, a huge accomplishment. Um, at Thanks. what point were you aware that maybe you were competing for a podium position? Did that happen day one, or did it happen day six? Like when? When did you know? Um, it's a cumulative <sighs> time, right? So it's each day. Yeah. They, yeah uh -huh. Every day. Um, and I think maybe only one day I was four or third, two days. Um, but going into it, my friends kept saying like, you're going to get top, you know, top three, if not better, you're going to, you're going to be up there. You're going to be up there. And I was like, you guys, please, there's too much pressure. Um, after the first day I thought, oh, maybe I can do, you know, fifth or top five. I don't know. Like, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was probably when I was running with Esther on the fourth day that we were second and then coming in second the fifth day, I was like, wow, I could have tried a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> I like that that's the thought. It's like, uh, I can push harder. I'm, I'm faster than this. Yeah. So you well, just, just from that point on. I just didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because everyone's telling you at the beginning, go easy, go easy, go easy. It's yeah. a long sort of thing. So by day five, you're thinking, I should have time to push. Yeah. And you time did. Time to push, and I should have pushed harder the other days, but it is what it is. But that's, I mean, that's a great question here to dovetail into the next question. I have to drink every time I use the word. And so I find mm -hmm. opportunities to use it, dovetail. It's great. Yeah. Uh, but you finished third female would you go back to try to better your finished position knowing that to. yeah yes. knowing that you can um <clears throat> it's a it's an expensive race and it costs a lot of money um i think if i were to receive some kind of help in the future then maybe i would go back um but i don't i think i would i could do so much with that kind of money um, and that I've, I've already experienced it. Um, yeah, it would take, it, I worked so hard to pay for this trip that I don't know if I could do that again. I imagine that it's, yeah, I imagine the trip to Costa Rica is its own expense plus the race yeah. plus, yeah, all, all that goes into it. Um, I hope that you get a chance to race a stage race again. It, it was really awesome to follow from afar. Uh, we get as yeah. we get very small blips of information uh, in the states while it's unfolding. Um, yeah. I think we even have some of your family in the chat room that are they're just so proud. We have some Guadaramas <laughs> in the chat room that are yeah, just like she's amazing, them in there. <laughs> amazing. Uh, so of course, shout out to the whole fam. Um, uh, yeah, so, we have. They're very supportive. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm just going to quickly interrupt and say that um, Chris Lee, top tier Patreon donor, is in the chat room right now. We don't often get to see him because he is in Hong Kong. He's in Hong Kong. And at this time. Chris just said, it's usually working hours in Hong Kong. I just have to join and share the news with you guys that people in Hong Kong are loving the movie. Very positive. Comments. Oh, awesome. Saying that awesome. We'll send more pictures. and But he has this rare opportunity to actually pop into the chat room. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> we Chris, never see Chris in the chat room. Chris and the uh, Trailblazer community in Hong Kong, they're usually in the middle of working hours or, or it's uh i think it starts to get to like midday here but uh it's great to have him be able to jump into the live show that's cool feedback uh can't wait to hear more from him and we'll we'll update the patreon crew with with how that screening went and stuff like that once once chris gives me the feedback but we do have a question here as well for you Sana, yeah so. and it's actually from caitlin gerben and ellie who we just saw on the weekend yeah. um so uh, this question is from Ellie and Caitlin. What are some, some of your favorite trails to train on in SoCal to prepare, prepare for a challenging race course like the Coastal Challenge? That is such a good question. That's funny that they asked that. Um, they were in town just a few months ago, um, and I got to show them some of my favorite trails. It was cool and... to see pictures from their 
because I, you know, I miss the SoCal trails. There's some ones that I'm just like, I just miss. And I saw pictures from their accounts on yeah. Instagram. I'm like, those are my trails. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it was so much fun to show yeah. them. Because anytime somebody asks me for trails in LA, because they say, oh, you live in LA, there's no mountains there. So I get really excited. Um, yeah, to school I remember, them. <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking on uh, one of the days where it was like, you have to be careful because there's this really big climb, take it easy. And then I was on the climb and I was like, have they been on Mount Baldy before? <laughs> right, right. Or, or on Jones Peak? Because this is not like... If anybody wants to go to Costa Rica for this race and lives in LA, I can give them a list of trails to go to that will for sure prepare them, if not over prepare them for the race. Awesome. Um, Register Ridge on Mount Baldy, North Backbone. They're they're all it was all it made the race seem like a piece of cake. So are you back to training now? Are you do you have another target in mind that you're you're uh, looking to crush? Well, once I, once I, uh, get better, yeah. um, I found out that I got into Lake Sonoma. Yeah. So that's only a few weeks away. Yeah. We'll be there. Oh, cool. Yeah. We're going to win. Running? Yeah. We're winning. Are you guys both running? Uh, uh, just one of us is, and it's not me. Yeah. I, I don't know if Kim is wanting to even mention it. I, well, well, I guess it's been mentioned. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, we're very close to the race at this yeah. point, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, I will not be running, but Kim will be, and I'll be there, um, <laughs> to scream at her face to keep going. Yes. <laughs> that's how it works. That's how, that's how marriage works. Sauna. <laughs> uh, but you're going to be there. You're going to be at Lake Sonoma. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, the goal is just to survive. Cause right now it's like, I, I did the race and I was still working in Costa Rica after the race. So I, there was never a time where I was getting back to training. So coming home last week, I was so excited. I'm going to get out running. I'm going to do all these things. And then I got sick. So it's okay. Uh, but I guess I also wanted to talk about, I know that you're sick. I know that you just got back from the climbing festival, mm -hmm. but I wanted to talk a little bit about the cross training side of things. I noticed that you yeah. are climbing a lot more. Is that something that you would encourage? Like, how do you fill your time when you're not running? Um, I just recently, like this last year, started climbing more, and mm -hmm. it's frustrating. Um, and it's so frustrating that I keep going back to it because I'm not like it's a constant struggle. You're you just continue. The growth is always there. Like there's always uh, room for growth, and I like to excel, and I like to be good <laughs> at things. And the fact that I'm not really frustrates me. So I want to get better and I, want, I look to get better. And that was one of the reasons why I went to the climbing festival is because I don't know a lot of women that climb and I don't have all the friends that I have are 90% male climbers. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot more powerful when you have your female companions that can, you know, you can do things with. Um, it was very, very helpful. Uh, I think it, helped build my upper body strength and my core. And I think core strength is so important in running. Yeah. And I think with that help, I've been able to push aside any more ankle injuries that I've been, that have been lingering. Um, and also with climbing, I got into more yoga, which I'm also extremely terrible at. I can barely touch my toes. Um, <laughs> but it helps. Everything helps. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you were talking about how hot yoga really helped with the coastal challenge. Yeah. The the heat, I mean, it just really prepared my my body and adapting early for awesome. it. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, a huge congratulations to Yasana. Uh, like uh, one I can't even imagine taking on a, your first stage race, let alone your first stage race being a third place podium finish. It, it's an, a huge accomplishment. Uh congratulations to you. you. Well done, Sana Guadarrama. Um Thanks. You are a first-time guest here on Ginger Runner Live. Long overdue because you are a long-time ultra runner. So what we like to do uh, with our first-time guests is throw them through the gauntlet with the quickie question quiz. It is a rapid-fire, very easy quiz where you just you you answer with the answer that's uh, as quick as possible. So whenever you are ready, give me the thumbs up, and we'll just rip through them. They're very easy. You let me know. You're ready. Okay. What was your very first race? 
Leona Divide 50 miler ultra. That was that was your first ultra. Was that one? Yeah. That's crazy. Favorite place to run currently? Uh, Strawberry Peak. Road or trails? Trails. Bucket list race. Um, there's this crazy Ironman in Norway that I want to do. Oh, that's that's actually kind of cool. Uh, favorite running movie? Oh, why can't I think of any of them? <laughs> it's because uh, where dreams go to die just isn't on the front of your your head there. Uh, where dreams go to yeah, die of course, of course, movie. that was the correct answer. Um, oh, yeah. Guilty pleasure TV show. Oh, anything Hallmark. Sign me up. <laughs> I actually don't know if we've gotten that answer before. I don't think so. We've had like good, weird drama, <laughs> but Hallmark movies. Blame my mom. She's always watching it and it gets me like anything cheesy. Like I have really stressful days sometimes that I need something really dumb to like. Uh, something really bad to watch and those are just they take the bucket yeah those will do it uh mm -hmm. favorite pre-race meal trail butter favorite post-race indulgence beer and finally what is the gear uh what's your favorite pair of running shoes that you're running in right now and we'll <sighs> we'll, we'll dovetail that with the coastal challenge what did you run coastal um, challenge in well i went into the coastal challenge with two pairs of used shoes that had holes in them so that was okay. great okay um, the innovate trail rock 285s between those that one and the solomon sense pro twos are my two favorites good choice yeah i saw in the thumbnail photo that of of this live show are those the yeah. solomons or the pink shoes right the the solomons yeah yeah those are those are pretty cool um you've had you passed you, you got a good grade you got you got an a plus congratulations Anna. um Great. And congratulations on kicking ass at the Coastal Challenge. Uh, Six-day stage race with some, there's the light, uh, with some yeah. nasty gain and jungle trails down there in Costa Rica. A uh, huge congratulations to you. Uh, you Thank really you. earned it. Nice job. Yay. Yay. Um, remind our live audience or our listening audience where they can find you on social media. There might be residual questions and stuff like that. So it's, people, where can they find really you? It's really hard. It's at sauna. S A W N A on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook. And then my website is with every mile.com. Go show her some love. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. It was awesome to have you, Sana. And of course, uh, we're going to have a post show as we do with all of our guests. Yep. Uh, we are going to keep Sauna around for just a couple more minutes. We're going to uh, do a post show with all of our Patreon subscribers. So if you are not a Patreon subscriber, consider it. It's as little as a buck a month. It helps the channel. It helps everything happen here. Um, and you get to participate in all of our post shows with our guests. And tonight we get Sauna, uh, which hey, will be Juniper. a lot of fun. Yeah, and Juniper. We're going to meet Juniper here in just a couple of minutes in the post show as well. Um, and you can even go back and access all of our post shows from the past, which is kind of worth the buck. Mm -hmm. A dollar. So consider it if you haven't already, but we have many who watch this show who are Patreon supporters, so we will see you mm -hmm. in just a couple of seconds. So it's, uh, we'll, it'll be really fun tonight in the post show. Am I forgetting anything? I always ask this, but... I don't think so. <laughs> There's been a couple of people asking about getting Barkley people on. Yes. We are... Uh... We are in the midst of booking our post Barkley. We're going to do one show um, with some Barkley guests. Yes. And to to respect the event and its history, um, we won't be talking to everyone that participates because obviously a lot of people like to keep their privacy. Um, some of the individuals that we have reached out to have already gotten back and said they want to be on our show. Uh, we are probably going to have a special episode this week. So keep your eyes yes. peeled. We're looking at Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Oh, I'm busy. Are you busy? No. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> I'm not either. But we do have one guest confirmed for that time. And we're just waiting to hear from uh, a couple more. So you'll want to pay attention by subscribing to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the ginger runner. Uh, you will know when that live show is happening because it will be posted and you'll get the notification. Click the little bell. Yes. Make sure you get the notification. Yeah. Make sure you get the notifications because you know, YouTube is this wonderfully large company mm -hmm. that loves screwing over small creators, including ourselves. So the only way to know when things are actually happening is by clicking the notification and then also going to the channel and seeing when it's posted. As soon as we get confirmation from uh, the other athletes uh, that Thursday at 6 will work, we will be doing that show. And it'll be a special one-off show. 
Um, instead of next Monday show, it'll probably be Thursday this uh, this this week. But you don't need to worry about that. Just worry that there will be a Barkley recap episode. And of course, where dreams go to die. You can go watch that now. Go to where dreams go to die dot com. It's the full feature following Gary Robbins for the last two years at the Barkley marathons. Uh, you can get it now for seven bucks or for eleven dollars. You get the bonus package. You'll get the movie right now, and then Gary. Uh, we'll be coming down to Seattle in the coming month at some point. Uh, we're giving him, obviously, as much space as he needs to, to like, sleep <laughs> and eat and decompress. Um, but he'll be coming down here. We'll be doing a director's uh, commentary tracks. We'll be sitting with the movie and commenting over the top of it, as we've done with movies in the past, much like what we did on tour. And we will be recording a special extra bonus talking about the 2018 event. So if you get the bonus movie right now, you will get those two packages uh, in addition to the movie that you can download now. So it's that's an extra, what, four four bucks. Totally worth it. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, you don't even pay the four bucks. So that's something there to consider. Go. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's it for all the self-promotion and stuff like that. Thanks again to our guest tonight, Sana Guadarrama. We're going to have her in the post show uh, here in just a second. Thank you all for tuning in tonight live or listening or watching at another date. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next week. Or later this week. Or later this week. Um, <laughs> get out there. Train hard. Race harder. And party the hardest. I know I am. And Kim is too. Wee. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Bye. <coughs> oh, no. There we go. Bye. <laughs>